Hi, my name is James Holroyd from Pocket Survey Cloud Surveying Software. Welcome to this short demonstration. I'm going to show you how the Home Purchase Surveying Software works and how to create your surveying reports quickly and easily. It can be used for most Home Purchase Surveys. Level 1, Level 2 and Level 3 surveys are made easy with the powerful Commentary Builder. Build your commentary from lists of standard phrases already built into the app. But you can also edit and modify these to suit your needs with the Phrase Design feature. Your commentary can be built from standard phrases of descriptions, features, defects and recommendations. Contact us to get your low-cost trial. Or you can get your first month's subscription at a reduced price. The first thing to mention about the app is that it's designed for mobile devices, but also works great on desktop computers. There's only one interface to learn, which looks the same on all devices. So you can use it on Apple, Android, tablets and phones, as well as desktop computers, such as Windows, Mac and Chrome. Pocket Survey has a unique feature that allows you to customise the menus and report structure within the app setup. We'll come back to that later on, when we explore the phrase design feature in more detail. So let's look at a home purchase survey I've already done to give you an overview of what comes out at the end. On the, on the buildings list, I tap on a building and you'll see the front page photo and inspection status, and then below that, you've got some buttons. We can copy the building information. There's a button to create the PDF inspection report. And one to open the generated PDF report. If we scroll down, you'll see which client this report belongs to. That is if you have multiple clients. You can turn off the clients feature in the app setup if you don't want to use it. The inspection details section shows the inspector, inspection date, inspection time, followed by some free format descriptive notes. The building details section shows more information about the building. Then there's a series of sections that make up your report. Introduction, about property, location, including a Google map of the property. Then there are sections for the main building components, such as outside, inside, services, and grounds, followed by legal issues, risks, overall opinion, and recommendations. Most of the report sections will be built from menus and tick lists that you can modify in the phrase design feature. Towards the end, you've got general building images such as floor plans, schematics, and any image you want to add to your report. If you want to make changes to the inspection, select the edit button. Let's scroll back to the top of the building record. To create your PDF report, choose the Create PDF Report button, and when the report is ready, select the Open PDF Report button. Let's look at a typical report in more detail. The front page is branded with your logo and your address. Then you've got your front photo of the building, plus an optional trade logo. You can use your preferred Rick's logo and reference here. Then you get an automatic table of contents, which is all hyperlinked. So you can jump to the different sections quickly. The report contains quite a lot of detailed information, all created at the click of a button. Then you've got about the inspection pages. These show inspector details, company details and disclosure statement. Then there's the summary sections of the report, such as overall opinion, condition ratings. The About the Property section contains important details about the property. Location details include a Google map of the area. Then for each building component and area in the building, we show detailed information. This information is produced from the standard phrases in the app. Note that you can survey as many building elements as you like, and these can be in different locations in the building. The detailed commentary is built from lists of descriptions, features, defects, and recommendations. The color coded condition status is shown on the right. You can have up to four photos for each item, and these can be large or small, along with captions. Each building item is shown in a similar format. Your clients will love the report format. After the major sections in the report, you have legal issues and risk sections. If you're doing a level three survey, you'll have the energy matters section. You've got your surveyor's declaration section, Standard terms of engagement pages come next. There's quite a few of these. At the end you have a typical house diagram. If you want to save your PDF report, tap the download button to save it to your storage area. Let's close the PDF report and get back to the app. We can return to the buildings list by tapping the home buildings button at the bottom left. So let's start a new building survey to see how easy it is to do. Tap the add button at the bottom right of the buildings list screen. You'll see a scrollable form with several fields to fill in. Most of these will be user configurable menus to speed up data entry. First, you can choose a client, or if you want to, add a new one. Let's add a new client organization. Type my client, then tap use. Then you can either add a client contact name or pick an existing one. You can store other information about your client, which is helpful if you want to contact your clients on site. And so you have a little client database. Then we can choose the inspector. You can have different classes of inspectors, like more powerful administrators. 
You can also have a client login where a client can access their reports via a client portal. Choose an inspection date and an inspection time and then add some inspection notes if you want to. The inspection status menu helps you track the workflow of your reports. We use a color coded pipeline approach where you go from schedule through to completed work. Remember you can add this information on site or do it in the office if you prefer. Now let's add some building details. You have a place to add a report reference. Adding addresses is easy since Google will search for the address if you start typing it in. You can import addresses in bulk using the import feature within the app. The building name is used to identify different buildings at the same address. We also have building type and an optional short description of the building. It's a good idea to allocate the report to a town, especially if you work nationwide, into other building details as required such as building status and your disclosure statement. Your reports will look much better with photos and Pocket Survey makes this easy for you. So let's take a building photo. I'm going to choose one that I've already taken because I'm using a desktop computer but you would snap this on site directly from your camera. That's the photo added to the front page of your report. You use a similar approach when taking all your photos. Then I choose save to add your report to the buildings list. Now we've set up the first part of the report. We can now inspect the building and enter information into the survey for the various sections of the report. So we'll tap into the building record to view it and you'll see the information we've entered so far. Plus the report sections we need to fill out. To add the sections we choose the add button. The introduction section is very easy since it preloads your report phrases. We can make modifications to these phrases if we wish, but we're just going to tap save. We do the initial sections in a similar way. The main building components are done in a slightly different way because we can enter multiple items at different locations. Let's now add an outside building element. Scroll to the outside section. Tap add. You should establish a location first, so you should choose a particular area or floor. And then, optionally, you can specify a room or area. You can tailor the list of locations to suit your needs in the app setup. We're leaving location 2 blank because we're doing an external area. Next, we need to choose the building item we're inspecting. We can choose good, fair, poor, or not inspected as the condition status. To make it easier to organise your standard phrases, we've split these up into different lists. We can pick one or more phrases to build our commentary. Let's pick some descriptions, features, defects, and recommendations. For all these lists, you can choose one or more options or nothing at all. You will see the app has built the commentary that will appear in your final report. You can make further edits to this commentary if you wish and add some free format notes. Let's take a photo. You can take up to four photos per item. The app will automatically launch the camera on your mobile device. However, I'll pick one from my computer because I'm demonstrating the app on a desktop. Notice you can also draw on the photo and give it a caption. You can take more photos in a similar way. So that's one item done. Now choose save. You do other building items in a similar way. Once you've inspected all the items in your building, you can now create your PDF report. You tap into the building record and choose the more prominent create PDF report button you will be prompted to confirm. It takes about 30 or 60 seconds while the software generates the report in the background. You can continue to work on other inspections while you are waiting. The open PDF report button will appear when your report is ready. So far we've covered the essential aspects of creating a home purchase survey report. As you've seen, it's quick and easy to do and produces a fantastic client report. But there's lots more to the software. For example, the most revolutionary part of all the PS Cloud apps is the app setup feature, where you can customize menus and report sections to suit your needs. You will see several configuration areas. Look at our longer training videos to find out more about this feature. Let's look at the phrase editor feature. In the middle of the screen you will see the main sections of the report. Tap on a section to expand it. Then you will see a list of building elements. Let's tap in one of these to see the phrase tick list available during the inspection. As you scroll down you'll see descriptions, features, defects and recommendations. If you want to view these as a long list click the view button. You can tap in the middle to view and edit them. Or tap the add icon to add a new option. Let's add a new descriptions option to the tick list that appears when doing your assessment. Tap the add icon. Type in our new option, such as asbestos column. Tap save and return to the previous screen. And then back to the app setup screen. That's the phrase design feature. Don't be afraid of experimenting during your low cost trial. We're always on hand to give you help and support. 
We can also control the report design to customise the PDF report to your needs. Now, remember to get your low-cost trial if you're not already a Pocket Survey user, where you will get your first month's subscription at a vastly reduced price. Remember, there's no obligation to carry on your subscription after the trial month, and you've got access to the full software, including free training and support. If you don't like the software after that, that's no problem. Just let us know and we won't bill you and you can continue your search for a digital solution for your home purchase surveys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to learn more about any of our Pocket Survey apps, please visit our website pocketsurvey.com where you'll see lots of information about all our building and inspection software. So that's the Pocket Survey home purchase surveying software in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Bye for now and see you soon.